uh, that Donald Trump does a lot of his business at Mar-a-Lago, right. which you had definitely been looking into. The presidency's kind of good for the bottom line for the Trump empire, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the, we, we did this really interesting look at Mar-a-Lago, and we, this sort of a, there's two sides of it. The, the, the events that had their galas at Mar-a-Lago almost uniformly reported getting more people, more money. They, you know, these charities raise more money by having events at Mar-a-Lago. And the ones that, told, that would tell us about their costs, they paid Trump more. more they, you know, them getting more people means they paid Donald Trump more, $100 a head or more. This is cases. since he's been president. Since he's been president. Okay. Since, he, since the election. We looked yeah, at all the things since, since the election. election. Okay. So, um, and part of that is just the idea that he might show up. You know, if he, and he does show up at a lot of these things. And people told me, look, if Donald Trump shows up your, at your event, it gets covered in the media in a different way. People hear about the name of your event. It's, you know, sure, it's huge publicity. Sure. Your donors like it. Everybody's thrilled by, you know, the idea that he's there. So the charities that had their events there, they made marginally more money, which means Trump made marginally more money. But at the same time, there are ch some of these charities that are not sort of part of the Palm Beach social vortex where they are they have Palm Beach fundraisers, but they're connected to institutions that are outside Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. A couple of examples. The, there's an I Institute part of the University of Miami. There's the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute based out of Boston. Those places where I think the leaders feel so pressure, political pressure not to do business with Donald Trump that you don't feel if you're sort of part of the Mar-a-Lago set in Palm Beach. So those two institutions I mentioned, the I Institute and Dana-Farber, have pulled their galas for next year. So it may be a case where Trump does better for the people that, that have their events there. Yeah. But for political reasons, he's losing whole galas, which is a lot of money. These things can be $275,000 a night that Trump takes in just to host one gala. But you, you mentioned that he makes more money, meaning not like right away. Does this go into a trust? What is, what is the deal? Well, I mean, so Mar-a-Lago— He did was, not divest. No. Right? So what he, he said he's, getting, he's taking himself out of operational control of his businesses, giving okay. it to Don Jr., Eric, and some other folks. But— that, and so all the businesses are now part of a trust, but the trust's only beneficiary is Donald Trump. And the terms of the trust say that at any time the president can take money out of that, that trust for any reason. So it's the same as owning them, and he's, he remains the beneficiary. A dollar paid to Mar-a-Lago is a dollar paid effectively to him. Uh, and that's not just Mar-a-Lago. I'm just thinking about uh, how, many, hotels, how many properties do, do we even know? Uh, my only thing, I know best the golf courses in Mar-a-Lago, and okay. we're talking at least like 16, 17 properties there, but there's all kinds of things. I mean, just as an example, this week one of my colleagues, Matea Gold, was reporting on this estate that Trump owns. I can't think of the name of the island. There's a Caribbean island where he owns this giant estate, and he's selling it now for, I think, $28 million, $10 million more than anything else on the island. That's a, the way that's set up. Whoever buys that estate from him, it's money right into Trump's pocket, and probably we will not know who that person is. It'll be done through a shell company. We won't know. So there's all kinds of things that are like that. You know, condos at the hotel, I mean, at the, at the building in Las Vegas. He's, he owns all these properties where you can basically put money in his pocket and not have to tell people who you are. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, is, is, have you seen the same... But so back to Mar-a-Lago, what you're saying is some, some uh, uh, organizations may have pulled out, but it's still a net plus... Last year was certainly a net plus. I, I don't know. I can't tell you that about next year because a lot of institutions haven't decided whether they're coming back. Um, but yes, this last year was certainly a net plus for Trump. Uh, so they've seen more business and and able to charge more. Right? Uh, well, they charge more per person. Yeah, so there's more people. If they charge per person, they get more money. Okay. Um, is that same the same thing true of his golf courses? The golf courses I know less about. I, I've been talking to people a lot about at the golf courses where so Trump has I think 13 golf courses in the United States. Uh, but there's an. It, I've been calling around trying to figure out how much the initiation fee is at, at mm. all those golf courses. Yeah. And there's a real divide between the courses that Trump himself will ever go to and the ones that he never will. <laughs> so, uh, for instance, there's a, a golf course outside Philadelphia, Trump, Philadelphia, which actually is in the suburbs of New Jersey. Uh -huh. He'll never go there. He never goes there. Uh, I mean, he goes maybe once. He used to go like once a year. The the initiation fee there, I think, is zero or it's a few thousand dollars. Same with the one in North Carolina. There's another one in, in New Jersey. He doesn't go too much. But the, then you look at the ones that he does go to, the one in West Palm Beach that's connected to Mar-a-Lago, the right. one in Bedminster, New Bedminster. Jersey, the Loudoun County, Virginia. Those ones, uh, let's see, uh, West Palm Beach is 150000 to join. That's just the initiation fee plus the dues. Bedminster, I think, is seventy five to 100000 plus dues. Loudoun is fifty or 60000 so the ones where he's going to go, where you might run into him, he makes a lot of money off the initiation fees. And Mar-a-Lago's initiate has a membership fee which too. Double uh, population doubled from one hundred thousand dollars to two hundred thousand dollars. Who are the people who are members of Mar-a-Lago? 
Uh, it's a lot of Palm Beach social types, which means people who live in New Jersey or New York or Boston go down to Mar-a-Lago for the social season. Who uh, are always members or? Well, Mar-a-Lago, we, not we, always, we're, but you know what we're I mean, trying to piece thing. together who's the mem- a member there. And a lot of them are mem- have been members for a long time or, you know, it, the bulk of the people joined before he was um, president or he, before he was elected. We're still trying to figure out who's joined since. It, certainly a lot of people could have joined. Um, but in Mar- in it, Mar-a-Lago is, you know, there's not that many sort of social clubs in Palm Beach. And Trump opened Mar-a-Lago. It was an option for, I think they were the first to admit Jewish members. Uh, a, a lot of the membership there is Jewish, Italian, people that were not sort of part of the old line WASP mm. membership yeah. of the old clubs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and do, have you had a chance, you or any of your colleagues, to look into the Trump property right here in Washington, D.C., the International Hotel. I walked by it uh, yesterday. <laughs> yes. So I we, still have not been inside it. It's it's nice. Uh, we've done a lot of reporting on that, and we'll do more. Um, and what, we're th- what we're finding is, uh, you know, if you go and look at who is doing business there, who's having events, you know, it's not only foreign embassies. I think the Kuwaiti, na- Kuwaitis held their National Day celebration there. But there's also, you know, uh, trade associations, you know, people who are in town who want to have business with the government. Um, this this Russian uh, Orthodox Church leader that stayed there last week, I and mean, I think people are recognizing that if you want to come into town and get an audience with Trump, or you know, get an audience with the Trump administration, it certainly doesn't hurt to be at the Trump Hotel. Right. Um, we I don't think we know overall how its business is doing. I mean, whether it's making more money than it used to, but certainly we're seeing a lot of business with people who want to do business with the government. Right. And if you go there on a Saturday night when he's in town, you might see him. Chances are, if you go to the BLT Steakhouse. He'll be there, with, right? With ketchup on his <laughs> <laughs> on his well done steak, <laughs> on his well done steak, right? Exactly. 